Hey, we're into the third and final video. One thing I forgot to mention in the other video was taking in some kind of lighting device for you when you, if you want to read in your bunk or you want to go out and make a trip to the outhouse at night. This is a headlamp that puts on your head and it, this particular one has three different three different levels. And then here's a smaller, these new LED lights really work slick. So you want to have a at least think about taking a headlight and having a light like that. I want to talk about the different ways that we rig uh, fishing and the one most effective, when I talk to people that went for the first time, they I ask them what is your choice, 90% of the time they say I like I like the slip bobber. It was more fun with a slip bobber than it was with a jig pole. A jig pole is harder to fish. I'm going to show you how to do that when we get up there. But this is how you rig, this is what you need to rig a slip bobber. It starts It starts up here with a string. That slides on and you slide it off a little spool and tie it. And that moves up and down the line. And that sets the depth. See the bobber, then the little plastic ball goes on. And then your slip bobber is hollow all the way through. See it goes up and stops right there. So whatever you're at, you want to set it about for about a foot off the bottom, and then it always it'll always stay there. If they start to move, you just pull tighter on them strings. Then you need a little bell sinker right here that holds helps hold the minnow down, and then you got a little swivel that goes on before your leader line, and then you got about 16 inches of leader line. I use eight pound clear uh, durable leader line. And then for the bobber, this is kind of a unique hook. It works very well for the walleye because of the, the way it's designed. You can see how it's bent around and up. You put the lips of the minnow up through there so it's setting like this. The walleye comes in and then when, it's, when you feel it biting on it, you pull up and this goes right up in the upper jaw right between the eyes. And 90% of the time, that's how you're going to get it. And these are the, these are the style hooks. This is a laser. Overhand. Uh, you can see the brand name on there. Uh, that's what I recommend. Something that style, if you can, if you can find them. Uh, that's what we're doing with a bobber pole. When you're fishing with a bobber pole, when the line goes down, you want to take the slack out and really jerk it hard because you got to get that hook to go up through the upper jaw of that walleye. Quite often, when you're first doing it, you you'll be missing them because you're not pulling hard enough. You can't pull too hard, but you can pull too soft. When that bobber goes down, you pull up on it. That's pretty much on the, what you need to know on the bobber fishing. The other pole we want Rick to set up with is called a jig pole. And this is how the jig pole is rigged. It's a little more simple setup than it is the bobber pole. Here you got the, uh, this is a, your, your six pound, or you can use a four pound, on your jig pole, if you're com comfortable with it, it's it's uh, easier to cast a longer distance, and the wind don't affect it so much. But you really got to be on top of your game on on setting your drag because you're using four pound and not six pound. But uh, six pound, and, or if you feel confident, go down to the four pound. Again, it has that little swivel so your line doesn't get twisted. About 16 inches of that eight pound leader. And then, then we're putting these jigs on. Now the things with these jigs, there's different colors. As you can see here, we use, use the orange, white, or green. And will work pretty good. Th one thing you watch when you're buying these jigs, some of them, a lot of them, you don't, the, the paint is still in the hole. And it's really tough. They got this little device, it's, it's called a, uh, a hole out. I mean, a, it goes in there and clips in there and it, it punches the hole and cleans out that uh, where the paint is. So you can make that work and it goes in there and it, I'm not going to try to make it happen right there. But that's what you have. If not, use an old hook and go down in there and, and clean it out. And then we put these tails on, the different colors, keep whatever is working for the day. This one is set up with an orange, but we can use the green. Some of these yums are actually scented with a bio salt. And they do work for the first few casts. If you don't have a minnow on, you just send it, uh, throw them out there. Sometimes you can get a bit bite on that without a minnow or a crawler on it. 
are so you got we're using white and the green the orange and these browns with a uh, with an orange tail they work pretty good so pretty something like that something like this with your jigs in packages I think about these for twelve dollars and I don't know there's fourteen I think in there these are eight ounce eight ounce jigs that's plenty heavy enough to get you down in there moving over here what else you're going to need in your tackle box if if you decide you know jigging you know when you're jigging and bobber fishing you're, you're probably doing like four to one four to one is mean is if you're out trolling for every one fish you get trolling you're going to get four with the bobber and jig pole so the time it takes to do one trolling but a lot of walleye fishermen are, are dug in and they just want to troll with night crawler harnesses or wally divers or rob papalas and that's that's fine if that's if that's what you want to do but our experience has been that you're going to catch many more fish with a barber pole and a jig pole and that but feel free to bring these things if you want to troll uh, take a look around at the lake and you can troll down round and out and around the islands and that'll that'll be it here's a little small tape measure you want to have in the boat there's a size limit on your fish up there 18 inches is the key you can have with a conservation license you can have one over 18 and one under in your possession or you can have two under you can't have two over 18 and if you get a bigger fish you want to kind of measure it you got that what I do is mark it on the side of the boat or on the seat with a felt marker and I don't have to pull the tape measure out all the time I know right where that 18 inches is so it at least something to measure or you can you can put that in your tackle box and these little small keychain things you want a stringer in your boat, you only need one between the two two tackle boxes. You don't you only need one stringer. But you probably want two of these, one in each tackle. This is a jaw spreader. Normally when you're catching walleye, you'll catch them right up between the eyes and the upper jaw. They don't swallow it. Once in a while they get it in and do swallow it, but pike are more apt to swallow it. And when the pike, you got two options. You bring the pike up to the side of the boat, and don't even bring it in. Just cut the line and let it go, but then you have to retie. But if you do bring it in the boat, these are jaw spreaders. You put it in there between the jaws of the pike, and then you go down in there with your needle nose and get your bait out, save your bait. So that's, that's something you might want to have in your tackle box. You want a good set of needle nose pliers like this, and then they have the side cutters. If you get a hook in the hand, you want to be able to cut that hook off with a good set of side cutters there. Or you can pull it back out and get it out of there. Here's something that's handy. Teresa, she wears this one around her neck or on her hand. The set of fingernail clippers. Actually, this is made for a fishing thing to cut line with. What I do with mine, I put it on little bungee cord. So I don't have to always open up my tackle box. It's right there. I can stretch it out and cut my line off. And I can just throw it back in there and close the lid. It works real fine. Okay, uh, here's a sh hook sharpener. After you catch, I don't know, six or seven fish or whatever, you get hooked up in the rocks, you want to have this hook sharpener that goes up. Just simply put it there and get it spinning and go in there and you can sharpen your hook. And then what I do is put it on my thumbnail and if I feel the drag on it, it's, it's sharp. That's a good sharp hook right there. This is a Berkeley. Uh, you want to have that in your tackle box with maybe an extra battery or two. Oh, you can always have that working for you. Teresa likes to have a pair of gloves. She don't like to handle them fish, especially pike. So these are like a fishing glove. Uh, you can put on if you if you care to have them. They fit right in the bottom of your tackle box. And if you need help with the seeing, you want to have a pair of glasses in there. If you want to have to tie your line and, and you don't have them on your uh, Polaroid glasses, if you don't have bifocals at the bottom, you maybe want to carry a set of glasses in your tackle box. To do that, so uh, pretty much have covered uh, what we're going to do. You don't need a real big tackle box. You got to have a few extra slip bobbers in there, and then you're going to have some tied up some jigs like this. Now these are these are plastic tubes I use for my come with my golf uh, tees. But what works if you can have a prescription uh, tubes that you get a prescription in something that so you can pre-tie. You can pre-tie your jigs with a swivel and your line and everything on it. All you got to do is, is pull it out of there 
and and retie. That saves a lot of time trying to. So that's one less knot you have to tie, and they're all in a container. Like I say, a prescription tube, anything that you can find in the individual. For the jigs, you're, I would say you need at least six, at least six of these tied up in, ahead of time in your tackle box, because you're going to get hung up in the rocks. It just happens, and then you have to break your line and you have to retie. So if you have to retie, you got these already made up, and they're in your tackle box. For uh, for your slip bobber, you do one and the same thing, but you're just you're just doing the swivel and the line and that and this style hook. Uh, you have them tied up and put in in a tube like that too. So it really it really helps out when when uh, when you get hung up or you break the line. Very seldom do you get hung up with a slip bobber. Once in a while, it drifts into the rocks if you're not paying attention to where you're, where the wind is blowing it, and then usually you can drive the boat over there and and you can get it out. On the jig, it gets hung up and you you just got to break your line and retie. That's just part of fishing because the fish are hanging out where the structure is and then when you're casting right up in the structure, you're going to get hung up once in a while. That's just part of fishing. I think I pretty much covered everything. It's a tackle box and uh, whatever thing you got here. If, uh, if you can't find what you're looking for down there, let us know. And we'll try to get it for you up here, so it'll be here for you when you get here. Uh, you can't, can't uh, get what I'm showing you today. Walla walla, let's go fishing. <laughs>